post. That's Christian Doolittle, the outstanding senior. Conversely, Chris Beard has his Red Raiders hitting their stride in late February as we head towards tournament time. We'll have more on that in just a second. It's Oklahoma in the whites, Texas Tech in the blacks. Your officials, Joe DeRosa, Jerry Pollard, Chris Restatter, and we are underway with the ball going out of bounds, only three ticks off the clock. And it's going to be Texas Tech with the opening possession. Texas Tech's guards have played really well lately. You know about Jemias Ramsey, but Moretti and Edwards, remember, they have final four experience. The three of them have played well. And the first foul of the game is called, and it's an offensive foul on Jemias Ramsey. Now Chris Beard tried to set up a little isolation play and give him the slot, but Reeves did a good job of uh, staying legal and picking up a cheap one 15 seconds in. Oklahoma led by the best scoring trio in the Big 12. Brady Manick, one of those players, number 35 in white. We're looking at two of the top three offenses in the Big 12, and Austin Reeves right on cue. Well, he was a focal point of that scouting report today, as you know, Rich, and uh, he does not shoot the ball well this year. Only 25%, but he's done everything else pretty well. And an unforced error as Kyler Edwards throws it out of bounds. That's two quick empty possessions for the Red Raiders. There's a lot of room here. Look, that's way beyond the NBA line for Austin Reeves. This is as big a game as Oklahoma has played this season. And McCuller getting to start for the third straight time for Chris Beard's club. He brings it up the right side. Here's Ramsey, second in the conference in scoring, just a freshman. This is the second youngest team in the Big 12 with two freshmen out there right now. McCuller pulls up and hits. He's going to be a terrific player, Rich. Chris Beard told us he may have been their MVP the last couple weeks. He's played 20 more minutes in each of the last five games. Third leading scorer for the Sooners, averaging 14 a game. You'll see a lot of switching on the perimeter from uh, this Texas Tech team. Three litters first touch, and he gets the shooter's touch. Pretty good. You wonder what the adjustment will be with that uh, digitally sized mask he's wearing. Three litters scheduled for surgery on that broken nose he suffered in Bedlam in Stillwater last Saturday. There's Oklahoma's turnover, and Texas Tech looking to capitalize. Moretti for three, off the mark, and Maddock gets the rebound. D. Little in transition. He loves that inside game. Devion Harmon for three, off the mark. Kept alive, but snared by the Red Raiders. Sloppy start for the Red Raiders, couple of uh, unforced turnovers. They'll run what we call a motion offense. All five players involved. Edwards can't get it to go off the window. All alone, McCuller. This is the top three-point shooting team in the conference, averaging 36% as a club. There's Doolittle, guarded by the freshman McCuller. That's his, that's his geography, Rich. We've got another foul on the floor, and if that's going to be on... I guess that's not on Ramsey. It looked like it was going to be on Jemias Ramsey. It goes on T.J. Holifield. It will stay Oklahoma basketball. They'll inbounds it under their own basket. There's Lon Kruger, who, talking to Chris Beard earlier today, he had an interesting thought on Lon Kruger. He said he's probably the most underrated, iconic head coach in college basketball. Yeah, no question. Five different schools he's taken to the NCAA tournament, won a game with each school, two Final Fours. Remember, he spent some time in the NBA as a head coach and assistant, or, or he'd have more than 600, 600, 700 wins. Yeah, 655 to be exact. Chris Clark down the floor now, 44 in black. He was a healthy scratch in their 30-point win against Iowa State, and he traveled with the basketball. Well, we mentioned Chris Beard commenting on his counterpart, Lon Kruger. 
He's no slouch in the coaching department either. Took his team to the championship game last year. Followed that up with that Elite Eight performance two seasons ago. And I know I've heard you say this many times this entire Big 12 season. No other team wants to see Texas Tech in their bracket in the, in the NCAA tournament. You're exactly right. They are starting to hit stride. Manic off the window for his first two. Good start for Oklahoma, but a poor start for Texas Tech. They have not done a good job early in this game running offense efficiently. Four minutes gone by, five-point Oklahoma lead. Must win territory now for the Sooners if they want to secure a bid in the NCAA tournament. Ten to shoot. And good defense again by Reeves with the block. Chris Beard telling his team today at shoot around they could win this game in defensive transition. Nice duck under by Manic. And a timeout on the floor, and Chris Beard is getting up in the face of his Red Raiders defense. Right now, he's talking offense. He's talking shot selection. He's talking turnovers. He didn't. He wasn't happy with Shannon's last uh, shot attempt that got blocked. Oh, with 15:28 to go and a timeout on the floor. It's been a good start for the Oklahoma offense, led by the big three we alluded to earlier. And they've got to play well. 45 points between them. First, it's Austin Reeves shooting one from way downtown. We're in the NBA arena, that was beyond the NBA line. Christian Doolittle can score it inside and out. And then Brady Manick, they're starting to chase him off the three-point line. So what he's doing is he's taking it into the paint area. Pretty crafty, excellent start for Juan Kruger's club, and we can't mention this enough. You know, the feeling this has for me is like a, uh, a Big 12 tournament game. It's, I know we've got a couple weeks before the tournament, Rich, but feels like a game that Oklahoma knows they must have to keep their season alive. And you know, it's funny you say that because Chris Beard said before every game, he tries to find that, that hook to get his team to buy in. And he told them today at practice, this is gonna be like an NCAA tournament environment. We're playing in an NBA arena. There's gonna be a lot of people in the seats, but you're gonna have a bigger expanse to play in. So we better get used to playing in environments like this. And so far, they haven't gotten off to a good start. Yeah, and, and they've played in some great places this year, but, the, but to your point, they, they are not sharp. They are not sharp in Oklahoma. You know, it's not been great, but they've been good enough to build this lead, get it out to seven early. Well, when you have a big three and they all average 14 or 15 a game, you think you're going to win a lot of ball games. The problem for Oklahoma is not all three of them have been playing all that well together. And as they, as you can see, when they do score double digits, they win a lot of games. Yeah, in a perfect world, they'd all get 15, right? The three of them each. But that's not how it has worked. And uh, they certainly need their performances tonight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. And in part by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. And Jeep, there's only one. Rich Hollenberg, Fran Schiller from inside Chesapeake Energy Arena. It's the home of the Oklahoma City Thunder, but Lon Kruger's Oklahoma Sooners playing one of their Big 12 home games in front of the Oklahoma City crowd tonight. to Michigan State's win against Iowa. We want to welcome you to Chesapeake Energy Arena in Oklahoma City, where the home team, the Oklahoma Sooners, are off to a scorching start. They lead 22nd ranked Texas Tech, 11 to two. Rich Hollenberg, Fran Fischilla, under 15 minutes to go. It's been all Sooners so far. And it's the biggest game of their season because they've dropped four out of six. 
They're in a precarious spot in terms of an NCAA bid. And if there's a must win this year, this is the one. Playing a team that will be in the field of 68. Sky Edwards getting in the score column. He had 17 the last time these two teams met back on February 4th, which was a eight point. Texas Tech lead. We talk about must wins according to our resident bracketologist, Joe Lenardi. Right now, Oklahoma is in, one of the last four in in the 12th seed, but a loss tonight, and they are out of the field of 68. So Oklahoma turnover, their second turnover tonight. What we haven't seen from Texas Tech yet is a little bit more patience on the offensive end. This offense, we call it motion, is a random ball movement, player movement offense. And they haven't done a good job yet of getting that ball side to side, making that defense stretch and work all 50 feet. There's McCullough working on Maddock, and Maddock walled up nicely. And I think McCullough could get that opportunity 15 seconds later in the clock. They need to move the defense a little more. Six with a chance for seven now. And that is the second foul on Jemias Ramsey. Take a look right here. You see Ramsey hits him on his shooting elbow right there. And that's a bad break for, uh, for Chris Beard, his leading scorer now out of the game with two. It's an early development to watch, especially because Jemias Ramsey despite being just a freshman, is second in this conference in scoring, averaging over 16 a game. He's been great lately as well. 18 in his last, 18 a game in his last five, 50% behind the arc. And because Texas Tech three switches on defense, they got caught in that mismatch with Manic. Norman was it for that Sooners foul, the first foul of the game for Oklahoma, 13.40 to go. It's been all Sooners inside the home of the Oklahoma City Thunder. First ever Big 12 regular season game played in an NBA arena. Witnessing a little bit of history, Frank. And the, and the reason is that Joe Castiglione, the athletic director, wanted to give fans up here in Oklahoma City and in Edmond suburbs of Oklahoma City up north a chance, 8 o'clock start, see the team a little closer to home than Norman which, by the way, is only 22 miles from here. But a uh, good opportunity to get a, get a grow the fan base a little bit more. Shannon's follow doesn't go. Texas Tech regains possession. Baseline jumper off the mark, and Alondis Williams has it for the Sooners. Here's Manick working that mid post. Picked off by Avery Benson. Yeah, he's their, he's their ener energizer, buddy, Avery Benson. Good defensive play right there. Just watch the ball movement now, because they've got to get more guys involved in touches. Ready, working on the enemy. Ten on the shot clock for the Red Raiders. Holyfield. Out to Moretti. We've got a foul on the floor, 12.34 to go, and five on the shot clock. Now Christian Doolittle will check back in for Lockwood, along with freshman Jalen Hill making his first appearance of the night for Lockwood. A man from Las Vegas who's a terrific rebounder. Of course, Lon Cougar, coach at UNLV. He's got great connections out there. In fact, the son, Kevin, now on T.J. Otzelberger's staff, and uh, they had a big win over the week. That that week. Knocking off previously on the feet of San Diego State. Holyfield driving left off the window, and that's one of his specialties. He's a smaller five, but he's got quickness in he the He does, and he can make the shot from the perimeter, so you have to honor that. And they needed that basket. See how they'll just free switch out there. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Reeves. Inside to Kirk Weth. And he has his first two of the night. 
Austin Reeves did a nice job of getting into the teeth of the defense. He stayed under control and dropped it off nicely. Ten-point Oklahoma lead coming out firing on all cylinders offensively. The rebound quick, and here comes Reeves again. He's got the green light, Austin Reeves. Into the lane, no good, and Terrence Shannon comes away with it. Two of the big three for Oklahoma on the floor right now. Christian Doolittle, 21 in white, wearing that mask that he has to wear now after suffering a broken nose in that Oklahoma State game last Saturday. Oh. Blocked out of bounds by Quet. And we have a timeout on the floor with Oklahoma up 10 on the 22nd ranked Red Raiders. But the big question in Norman, will they get enough down the stretch to get off the bubble? We'll discuss bubble talk when we return to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma and Southern Cal, currently the last two teams in the field. Don't think the Sooners can survive a loss tonight. It would drop them to one and nine against other projected NCAA teams, and that won't be good enough. What do the Oklahoma Sooners have to do to be dancing come March? Here's our bracketologist, Joe Lenardi. Oklahoma and Southern Cal, currently the last two teams in the field. Don't think the Sooners can survive a loss tonight. It would drop them to one and nine against other projected NCAA teams, and that won't be good enough. That's Joe Lenardi. What does Frank Fischilla say? Doom and gloom from Joe Brown. I, I agree with Joe because uh, they've lost four of their last six, and they've got some games left that are really important, starting with tonight. Uh, that's clutch. Jalen Hill had only made three threes coming into tonight all season. You see the numbers on the left, three and nine versus quad one. Yeah. Which are the most important to you that we're seeing? Quad, quad one wins. Yeah. I don't even mind the losses because if you're playing quad one teams, you're going to have losses. Right. I've said it all year. They're, they're the average team in this league. 
which is usually good enough to get to the NCAA tournament. Well, if history is any indicator, and the last two years are recent history, as the enemy misses from three. The Oklahoma Sooners have proven that you can have a losing conference record and still make the big dance. And I would counter that by saying this year in the league, this bottom of the league is not strong. And so you can have a losing record, Rich, if you have quality wins against the top of the league. And the only one I can think of is West Virginia at home. That ball out of bounds. It's going to stay Texas Tech basketball. 9.51 to go in the first half. 13-point lead for Lock Kruger's Sooners. And here's what we were just talking about. When you look at those 8, 10, 7, 11 for Oklahoma, you've got to keep in mind that the league was the best league in college basketball really over the last six years. Not as much this year because the bottom of the league is softer, but I just don't think 7, 11, 8, and 10 will do the trick this year unless there's a win over Texas Tech. There's a, a win coming up, uh, you know, at West Virginia on Saturday. And obviously, the Phillips 66 Big 12 tournament in Kansas City is coming up, and if the Oklahoma Sooners can win a couple of those games, you never know how much that's going to impact things. Yeah, that's the extra credit question on the final exam. Right. It's, the, it's the Big 12 tournament. Now, you see what Chris Beard is doing, and uh, I like this. He's not going to foul his best score out in the first half, so he's going to play Ramsey. They're going to go to his zone to try to protect him a little bit. But offensively right now, Red Raiders are out of kilter, without a doubt. And Jemias Renzi has more fouls, two, than points, zero so far. More than halfway through the first half. Jalen Hill feeling it. He's got another bucket, five for Hill. And the lead is 15 for the Sooners. Sooners are locked in tonight on the defensive end, you can tell. Ten on the shot clock. Another block by Quet. It's out of bounds, and the officials say it's going to stay Texas Tech basketball. Chris Quet is really contributing. Getting a lot of high fives and low fives for a good productive few minutes on the floor. Edwards, no. Clark, yes. Manning, catch and shoot. Short. Well, they were fortunate there. You don't want to give him those looks. Manic has struggled the last three games. He was red hot for a good part. A big 12 play. Nice look from Ramsey to Clark, and Clark gets fouled in the meet. Last two possessions for the Red Raiders, very solid. They got the ball into the paint, made the extra pass. Now Clark will go to the line. One thing about Jamias Ramsey, for a scorer, he's not what I would call a ball hawk. He, he moves the ball, he makes good decisions, and he's one of their hardest working players in practice. Here's Clark. Makes the first of two free throws. Saturday night at 6 Eastern on ESPN, seventh-ranked Duke taking on Virginia in another sonic blockbuster. Then at 8 Eastern, a Big Ten clash as ninth-ranked Maryland hosts number 24 Michigan State with the Terps leading the Big Ten right now by two full games. You can also watch that live on ESPN app. Michigan State winners against Iowa earlier on ESPN2. Duke is in overtime right now yeah. against Wake Forest. Little pressure now by, by uh, Texas Tech, little 2-2-1. Two, two, this is just designed to maybe you get the Oklahoma to be a little sloppy, but not really right there. Good ball move, look at that. That ball is being whipped around the circle. Short on the shot again. Here comes Moretti. First time tonight, the Red Raiders have a little offensive rhythm. Uh, tough pass. Yeah, Clark tried to force it inside. He's picked off by Doolittle. He did. He tried to squeeze it in there. Stolen away by McCullough. 
Goes right into Doolittle, and Benson can't follow. Oh, man, bad break. Good challenge by Doolittle on, on the defensive end. And Benson just missed a layup. Here's an open three. Off the mark for Harmon. Both teams getting some good scoring opportunities, just not cashing in. Yeah. And Clark makes a difference because he's really their point forward this year. Five assists a game. Too much dribbling right now. McCullough from the corner. And Hill, the weak side rebound. I'm not sure I can remember Texas Tech having this poor a first half offensively. Ten points, first 13 minutes. This is from the number one offense scoring-wise in the Big 12. And they've been shooting it well. There's Reeves, the hesitation, and drops it down. Looks so good coming off his hand. He's got the green light, Rich. Rich you remember him at Wichita State. 67% of his shots as a shot girl were behind the arc. He's really expanded his offensive game, really good off the dribble. Coming off a career high, 24 in their loss to Oklahoma State Saturday. Shannon off the window. Now, we say this a lot. This is just coach speak, but it's true. If you're Texas Tech, you've played really poorly. You want to just cut into this lead, get it to eight, get it to six. Can't eat the elephant all in one bite. You don't need to. Reeves dials it up again. Austin Reeves from dead center field. Boy, is he a handful. As Chris Beard was coaching up his defense today, they were calling out a defense called Trey Young, specifically designed to stop Austin Reeves. That's high praise. We might, we might see that <laughs> soon enough. Baseline mid range. Back to the zone. They'll match up out of it and then they'll start switching. So it really becomes man to man, which it is right now. Show zone, go man. Another step back for Reeves. This time it's off the mark and we've got a foul on the floor and a timeout on the floor. Austin Reeves came to play at Chesapeake Energy Arena. Newark, Arkansas's finest. Take a look. Ball handling into the shot. Shooting it from deep. That's a good skill package right there.
This is the Big 12 on ESPN. Coming to you from Oklahoma City, Chesapeake Energy Arena. Oklahoma shooting 50% from the field, led by the Big Three. Yep, exactly. And you'd, you'd expect this from these guys. They've uh, Each of them individually has had solid years. They don't always put it together at the same time, but tonight they're cooking, and particularly Austin Reeves, the, the junior transfer out of Wichita State. He leads all scores with eight points, and when they get into double digits, they win a lot more often than they lose. All three of them averaging 14 points a game. They're one of only three major conference teams that has three players scoring that much. Arkansas and Alabama, the other two. Eight and three when they uh, get into double digits. Watch Clark, he loves to operate in that foul line area because he's their playmaker. There you go. And he knocks down the three from yep. the win. Again, poor first half by the Red Raiders. Just chip into the lead. A lot of basketball left, 25 minutes to go. And for Oklahoma, they gotta stay in this groove. Austin Reeves is oh showcasing some otherworldly range. I was trying to think who he reminds me of. He's got a little Jeff Hornacek in his game. But I love the idea that he transferred here to be able to continue to develop his all-around offensive game. He was an elite scorer in high school. Clark silences the crowd if only momentarily. Chris Clark has six. Still with the Shockers in Wichita. They affectionately refer to Austin Reeves as Jimmy Chitwood. They weren't too affectionate when he left. <laughs> Good oh, shot nice. fake by Maddock, but he's short on the three. And a foul away from the ball. We have 327 to go. Brady Maddock and his suitors are up 10 on the 22nd rank, Red Raiders. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today.
Oh, you gotta be prepared for everything. He got it! Well, I know one Champ Week tournament that we're both looking forward to, Fran Fraschilla. That's the Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Tournament starting on March 11th, the first round games. And if it started tonight, this is what the tournament bracket would look like. Exactly. And the reason you can't decide between Baylor and Kansas is because they're, they're in the same exact spot. They, nobody has beaten either team this year except for Baylor beating Kansas and Kansas beating Baylor. Baylor is taking care of Kansas State right now with Waco pretty handily. So they'll improve to 14 and 1 in the conference schedule, just like Kansas, who got a win last time. Good ball movement by Oklahoma. They have really, really been efficient offensively tonight. Under three minutes to go. It's been all Sooners in the first half. 32-19 trying to pull off the upset and get a big resume boost for the NCAA tournament with a win against the 22nd ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders. You know, Quip doesn't play a ton, but he blocks a shot once every seven times down the floor, which if he had played more minutes, Rich, he would be among the top ten shot blockers in the country, and we are watching that tonight. He has been a rim protector. Oklahoma as a team has five blocks. I believe three of them are courtesy of number 52 in white, Kurt Quef. Came into tonight with 34 blocks in limited minutes. You see the timing. Young man who played at Salt Lake Community College. His family, like so many from the South Sudan, emigrated first to Egypt, then the refugees to the United States, and he grew up in Salt Lake City. Mom has done a great job with that family. I know they're all proud of him back from Salt Lake City. To Salt Lake as a three-year-old. Now playing Division I basketball on a scholarship. There's Clark taking it all the way, coming up empty. Saved out of bounds by Clark. Good hustle, but he challenged Queth again. And that's going to go on Christian Doolittle. Well, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 Hoops fans. It's the exclusive home for so many Big 12 games, including the final week of the regular season. Wednesday, March 4th, TCU taking on the new number one, Kansas. Then Saturday, March 7th, the Big 12 regular season concludes with second-ranked Baylor meeting number 20, West Virginia, and Iowa State facing Kansas State. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12. So I'll be at Baylor, West Virginia uh, for Big 12 Plus. I think we ought to have a, a live pull the names out of the hat to, like determine, to determine the number one seed in the tournament. I'll be available to host it. I'll pick the name out of the hat and we'll decide who's going to be the number one seed and number two seed. Wouldn't that be crazy if both teams end up 17 and 1? Could happen. There's another three ball this time. Kyle Edwards chipping in. Only the second three tonight for Texas Tech, and we talked about how well they've shot the ball lately. Now, you cannot give Austin Reeves any airspace right now. Well, maybe not the shot that Lock Kruger wanted, but the Sooners get it back. I'll tell you. Yeah, there was no effort on the part of, of the Red Raiders right there. McCullough was the only guy that went after it, and there was a bunch of guys standing around taking pictures. Well, coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report, Kevin DeGandhi, Seth Greenberg, and Lafonso Ellis will get you caught up on the world of college basketball. They'll talk about Baylor trying to get a quick win back in the column after losing to Kansas, and then Duke is in double overtime. We'll take a quick time out and be back with the rest of the first half after this.
Back inside the home of the Oklahoma City Thunder of the NBA, but tonight it's all about the Oklahoma Sooners looking for a resume-boosting win to get themselves into the tournament. Right now, our bracketologist, Joe Lenardi, has them as one of the last four in, but he has told us that a loss tonight against the Red Raiders, Fran, puts them on the outside looking jo in. Joe's terrible for the me mental health of college coaches, <laughs> I'm telling you. And you, you, it starts in, like, late January. Ten on the shot clock. The enemy. Good closeout by Ramsey. I would get the last shot right here. About three second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. It's a minor moral victory if they can cut this to single digits. to shoot for the Red Raiders. Now three to shoot. They get it off, but it's a shot clock violation. Did not touch the rim, and Oklahoma will have 2.6 seconds to get it from under the opposing basket all the way to their basket, but still plenty of time to get off a decent shot. Big thing was Kirk Webb did a tremendous job out here switching on to Moretti, would not let him get to the paint. Here's Reeves. Off the window, no good. Oklahoma leading by 10 at the break. They are nine and two and they lead at the half, but one of those losses came at the hands of Texas Tech in Lubbock. Here's Reeves and Manning, two of the big three for Oklahoma, almost out. Not insurmountable, insurmountable for this Texas Tech team. On the other hand, Oklahoma, they got to keep moving the ball and creating opportunities for their what we call big three. Oklahoma shot 16 threes, but they were shooting over 50% from two-point range. Is that a concerted effort on Lon Kruger's part? They've got guys that can score inside, like this guy with the ball, and the guy with the ball that's going to shoot it right now. In and out, that looked good off his hand and frustrating way to start for Brady Manning. He had seven in the first half. I talked about this in the first half, Rich. Texas Tech will get better shots in this offense if they move the ball. Ramsey, short, and Doolittle has the rebound. Picked off by Ramsey. And nice transition offense from the Red Raiders. Wow, when do you see a two-on-one break like that? Old school, back and forth. Two freshmen hooking up, nicely done. And it started with Ramsey's effort on the defensive end. 11th in the conference and steals is Ramsey. Inside, Dula. Gives it up to Manning with the flush. Ramsey now, he, he, he likes to come off those screens in the middle of the court. I said it earlier, he's not a ball hog, he'll move it, but he's got to stay aggressive. Where we feel? Fake the three, drove the lane, and a foul on the floor. Watch uh, Jemias Ramsey here, gives it up, gets it back, gives it up, and McCollum finishes it nicely. And then good hustle by Christian Doolittle. Nobody accounts for Grady Manick with that cut to the rib and a good find. These two guys grew up together here at Oklahoma City area and they've known each other since they were six years old. Texas Tech turns it over. Here's Oklahoma. Feels like they've been up by double digits basically the entire game. Exactly, they got off to a great start. Those early turnovers by Texas Tech put them in a hole. Sooners trying to snap a three-game losing streak. A good hustle right there by Chris Clark. He's stuck in behind. And Clark gets it on the other end. Chris Clark has eight. He averages just five and a half a game. One of the things you've heard me say a bunch this year, Rich, is first three minutes of the second half is critical, particularly for the team with the big lead because they worked so hard to get a 10-point lead.
foul away from the ball. Watch Defense Clark. Leading offense. Yeah, Clark on the backside. Good hustle. First to the floor is McCullough. And again, good ball movement, good touch pass right there. I believe we're at that point because Oklahoma played really well for 20 minutes, and the last thing you want to do is come out here early and not be dialed in on both ends of the floor, especially against a hungry Texas Tech team. Doolittle loves that mid-range. And he's got a nice yeah. stroke from Christian Doolittle, the only senior on Lon Kruger's roster. With that mask after breaking his nose last Saturday. Gonna have surgery on Thursday. Manic. Nice move down low to get an easy two. Good footwork by Brady Manic. He pivoted into trouble, but he was under control and still finished. It's that number eight and three when all three of the big three score in double digits. Two of them are there already. They look good tonight. They're all dialed in and they need to be. Biggest game of the year for the Sooners. Bounce pass, Moretti the floater, too strong. Here comes Reeves, one of those big three. He had 11 in the first half. Too little. That's automatic. Yeah, he's got eight now. 11 for Brady Maddox, 11 for Austin Reeves, 8 for Christian Doolittle. The lead is 14 for the Sooners. Well, when you have a big lead at half, you want to get to the next timeout and increase the lead. Take a look right here. Good ball movement. Watch Brady Maddox. Good footwork inside. Pivot, finish, and then Christian Doolittle, as good as there is in the mid-range. This is his territory. Knocks it in. exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. From inside the Oklahoma City Thunders Chesapeake Arena, 
Rich Hollenberg, Fran Fraschilla, the big three for the Sooners, showing up and showing out. But they need to. They know what's at stake. Time is running out. Losers are four out of six. Wow, they've had point blank shots tonight, the Red Raiders. Ramsey's still scoreless. Second leading scorer in the Big 12. Shot clock for the Sooners. And he's going to have to force it up. Step back three. Good challenge by McCullough. He was right on Maddock. Maddock had to take a tough one. lead changes when these two teams met on February 4th. Oklahoma's led from the jump in this one. What's been the difference? Making shots early in the sloppy play like that of Texas Tech from the very start of this game. Eight turnovers for the Raiders. Maddock follows his own miss. And that's the largest lead of the game for the Oklahoma Sooners. Maybe the key for Oklahoma is to play in Brady and Brady Maddock and Christian Doolittle's hometown. Both grew up very close here to the center of Oklahoma City. There's a foul on Reeves with the reach in, but the Sooners are rolling by 16, looking for a resume building win. We'll talk Big 12 bracketology when we come back. Season long, it looked like the Big 12 would be a five-bid league, the top half in, the bottom half out. But now Oklahoma and Texas are converging in the middle, makes their upcoming battle huge. But more to the point, teams tend to play their way out more than in this time of year. So the Big 12 could end up with four when all is said and done. season long it looked like the Big 12 would be a five bid league the top half in the bottom half out but now Oklahoma and Texas are converging in the middle makes their upcoming battle huge but more to the point teams tend to play their way out more than in this time of year so the Big 12 could end up with four when all is said and done. 
Yeah, and I don't think this is the best year the Big 12 has had in a while. There's been years where they put six and seven teams in. Five makes sense, but only if Oklahoma starts to win some of these games. And, of course, Texas on a three-game win streak. Who knows? They go to Texas Tech on Saturday. They'll play Oklahoma next Tuesday night up here in Norman. Amazing gut check job by Shaka Smart with all the injuries that the Longhorns have suffered. And those young kids have really taken advantage of the playing time. Will Baker and Kai Jones. Shannon hangs and can't hit. And here comes the enemy for the Sooners. And no second shots tonight for, the, for Texas Tech. Has their size or lack thereof hurt them tonight? You know, they just haven't, to me, they're not going to the glass as much as I normally see them go. Well, certainly there's a jumble in the middle of the conference standings in the Big 12. Oklahoma coming into tonight, six and eight. West Virginia, seven and eight. Texas improved to seven and eight with that win against the Mountaineers. So these would be the two teams feasibly that would be that fifth Big 12 team to make the turn. Exactly, and you know, there's some similarities there. Both right smack in the middle of that mishmash of teams that are not out yet, not in yet. Need these two weeks plus conference tournament to really get going. That's true of so many teams around the country. This is an NCAA play-in game tonight. That's an offensive foul on the Sooners. And Texas Tech looking to build a little momentum. Well, this is what Avery Benson does. Holds his ground, takes a shot. And he's outside the restricted arc. Young man who committed to Chris Beard. Chris was coaching at Little Rock and followed him to Lubbock. Beard calls him the backbone of our culture at Texas Tech. But right, Fleck has challenged another shot. Kevin McCullough went in there, double and triple pumping, and Fleck said, nope. Gonna put some cellophane up there on the rim tonight. It's gonna be a third foul on McCullough. 22nd ranked Texas Tech coming in, winners of five of their last six, and coming off a road win in Ames where they won by 30 over the Cyclones. Scored 87 points in that one, but struggling on the offensive end against an electrified Oklahoma defense tonight. He's gonna shoot it. He got it off. It's an air ball, so it's a shot clock violation. Well, Saturday night at 6 Eastern on ESPN, seventh-ranked Duke takes on Virginia in another sonic blockbuster. Then at 8 Eastern, it's a Big Ten clash as ninth-ranked Maryland hosts number 24 Michigan State. You can also watch live on the ESPN app. Another little head scratcher for the Duke Blue Devils losing earlier tonight to Wake Forest. 113 101. I think that was in double overtime. Double OT. Yeah. yeah. In Winston Salem. Duke, according to the BPI, Duke has the second best odds to win the national championship, second only to Kansas. Do you agree? Disagree? I think in this given year, you can certainly put them in the mix. The last I checked, they only had like three or four quad one wins. That was about a week ago. And they're coming off that loss. You can't do that. That's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. And another offensive charge taken by Chris Beard's Red Raiders. This time, it's the freshman, Clarence Nadalny. Well, the good news for Oklahoma is they're not scoring, but neither is Texas Tech. And then down at the other end, you see Nadoli, the freshman from France, stepping in. Now, the bad news for Texas Tech, Rich, is they're not scoring. Came into this game touting the fact that we have two of the top three offenses in the Big 12, and yet their defense has been the headline tonight. Sabrasov, the young Russian, getting a chance now. Good couple of shoulder fakes by Kevin McCullough continuing his solid play. That time McCullough pump fake twice. 
and threw the shot block off a little bit. I love his toughness, McCollum. But Krebs has answered the challenge at the rim tonight. Foul called. And another offensive foul drawn by the Texas Tech defense. Timeout on the floor. The Red Raiders looking to build a comeback in Oklahoma City. We're destined for greatness. Nobody ever thought we would make it. Watch out for all we take it. A Sonic Blockbuster season continues Saturday at 6 on ESPN. Well, that'll be coming up. Another Sonic Blockbuster right now. Duke, despite the loss to Wake Forest earlier tonight, does not move off that two line according to Joe Lenardi, but Dayton, who won tonight, Fran, moves ahead of the Blue Devils. You know, Dayton's only got two losses. They lost to Kansas in overtime in Maui and on a neutral site to Colorado. Colorado's a top 25. Yeah, yeah. What a season Dayton's had. They, they've got a guy that could be the National Player of the Year, Obi Toppin, and Chris Beard knows there's a lot of time left. Their defense in this half has been very, very good. Yeah. They still haven't generated enough offense. Of course, we haven't called Jemias Ramsey's name all that much. Foul trouble early. He's missed some easy ones. Or sat or sat. From the corner. Good looking shot. Yeah. The enemy comes away with it. Oh, you could use a bucket. They haven't scored in the last three and a half minutes. Oh, for their last three field goals. It's kind of been feast and fat for the Sooners this half. They're shooting five for ten, but they just haven't scored the last few times down. Five turnovers in the last three and a half minutes. 
for Lon Kruger's offense, and a lot of that is due in large part to Chris Beard's yeah. excellent defense. And the flip side of it is Texas Tech hasn't taken advantage. Little zone now. Looks like a 1-3-1. We're going to see a line change for Chris Beard on the next whistle. Five different players set to check in for the Raiders. Nice touch by the enemy. I think he's, he was hoping this group would give him some energy. High off the window for Ramsey, no good. And we're going the other way. Boy, I'll tell you something. The un underrated guy tonight for Oklahoma has been quick. Because even when he doesn't block shots, he's there, he's working, and he's challenging. Sometimes you don't have to be a shot blocker, you could just be a shot changer. Yeah. Also known as a spook. Because <laughs> he's spooking those shots. So. I've heard of ghost screens, not ghost blocks yeah. necessarily. Well, they know he's there, there's no question. That should be a charge. Hill's got to know better, but he's only a freshman. He I just, believe just in this half, it's the fourth offensive foul called on Oklahoma. So Hill, after that foul, will take a seat on the bench. Again, Lon Kruger content to go with two of the big three on the floor. It's Manic and Reeves right now with Doolittle on the bench. Well, there's no reason to take Wet out. Let's see if Ramsey could affect the game without his score. He tries a three, and he's off the mark. Not his night tonight. Uh, it's toughness by Brady Manic right there. Took it right out of Holyfield's hands. Harmon and Bienemy, freshman and sophomore, they've been solid tonight. Not a lot of offense, but good ball movement. Seven to shoot for the Sooners. Tough one from Reeves. And then we've got a foul on the floor. It's going to stay with Oklahoma. Christian Doolittle set to check back in, and Kirk Webb will take a seat on the bench. Again, productive minutes from the big man. Along with Williams, number 15, and White also checking in as Austin Reeves will get a blow. Good piece of coaching by Lon Kruger. He keeps two scores out there. Reeves gets a rest here, probably to the, to the TV timeout at 8. Kicked out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Sooners. Texas Tech is just free switching inside. They almost got Maddock on a guard. Now we have a stoppage of play. Chris Beard wanted his team <laughs> to huddle up, get a free timeout, and Joe DeRosa wasn't having it. <laughs> All Chris should do it was do it as time as shoelaces. Joe DeRosa, great official, former NBA official. He's been a great college official, and uh, this is the last year he's going to referee. We'll see him in the Big Ten tournament. Great mentor to some of these young officials. He's refereed Shaq and Kobe, LeBron, and now doing the thing in his college. Doolittle with the sweet touch. How about that range? Now all three of the big three are in double digits, Fran. And when that happens, Rich, they win some games. Eight and three this year. This is just what the doctor and Lon Kruger ordered. Again, biggest game of the year for Oklahoma. It would be their most impressive 
in all aspects. And in, according to our resident bracketologist, Joe Lenardi, it would keep them in the NCAA tournament. They're going to call goaltending on that one, score the basket for Jamal Bienemy, who's got seven. 8.37 to go, and the lead has suddenly ballooned to 17 again for the Sooners. Brady Maddox going to go out, get a rest. So Queth comes back in. He's been, as you said, very, very active tonight. Reeves on the bench. So Juan Kruger doing a good job with this lead right now of making sure that his best players are ready down the stretch to close this game out. You know, I talked to Carlin Hartman, the assistant coach for Oklahoma before the game. I said, how much do you talk about being on the bubble? And he said, we talk about it all the time. You have to be a truth teller with your team and know what's at stake. Uh, these kids now, they know from late January on, they know, they know what's at stake. And a lot of these guys, like Joe and Artie, are very accurate. Tough shot. Again, good defense from the Sooners. This is turning into a typical Big 12 game this season. Once again, it might be first to 60 wins it. Right now, Oklahoma has a 48-31 lead over the top scoring offense in Big 12 play in the 22nd ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders. And Tech's gonna call a timeout. So we'll take a timeout with them. We will return to Chesapeake Energy Arena in Oklahoma City with the Sooners up there. Texas against Kansas in Oklahoma City. Kevin Durant. Oklahoma up 48-31 on 22nd ranked Texas Tech and Chesapeake Energy Arena has seen its fair share of exciting college basketball. Texas against Kansas in Oklahoma City. Kevin Durant, the numbers on him just go on and on to be more impressive. Durant oh. for three more. Rush is taking this ball game over for the Jayhawks. Chalmers for three. The first overtime in Big 12 championship game history. Kansas wins back-to-back -back Big 12 championships. 
remember that game. It's probably one of the greatest uh, Big 12 championship games, if not the best one ever. Kevin Durant, Rich, his team did not win. He was the MVP of the tournament. And I believe Kansas was down 25 in the first half. Oh, that got us uh, reminiscing about some other great moments that took place here in Oklahoma City. You got to go back 10 years for one of the most memorable wins by a mid-major club. Ben Jacobson's Northern Iowa Panthers taking care of the number one Kansas Jayhawks, Ali Farouk Manesh, with the huge game. And then just six years later, Texas A&M rallied to beat that same Northern Iowa team in double overtime. And that was to go to the Sweet 16. And if you remember, Northern Iowa beat Texas in a nail-biter slash thriller two nights earlier in this building. That was a great comeback by Texas A&M. I think they cut it to that 12-point uh, lead with 44 seconds left. They ended up tying that game. Clark with the free throws. Well, Texas Tech's going to need a miracle, and they're going to need some really aggressive full and half-court pressure. You cannot let Oklahoma comfortably run their offense the last seven and a half minutes. And if you know Chris Beard, he's probably got some sort, something up his sleeve. Right now he's got the big fella Chua in the game. The enemy behind the three-point line. Offensive rebound and a foul called. And again, the size of Oklahoma is coming to the forefront. Brady Manick is a good rebounder. He's, he's proven that over his time. And, and Chua just made a cameo. Freshman from Cameroon. And now, looks like it's winning time for Lon Kruger. 7.22 to go, and the big threes on the floor all together for the first time in quite a while. I think the, uh, he's the best in the Big 12 in that range. The only guy that's pretty good there besides him is Lindy Waters of Oklahoma State. This guy lives in the mid-range. Uh, not, whoa! Reeves wants it. Doesn't get it. That was good basketball by De Davion Harmon. He pulled it out. Then he saw the defense, what defense wasn't set, drove it. He got Reeves a good look. Harmon, a top 50 kid, grew up in Denton, Texas, about two and a half hours south, a little bit less than Norman. His grandparents live here in Edmond, so I'm sure that uh, uh, there's some Harmons in the arena tonight. Christian Doolittle went to Memorial High in Edmond. Yeah. Hey. Offensive foul, Brady Manick. Hitting the deck for the team. Both teams giving up their bodies tonight. Lots of charges. And Maddox set, two feet on the ground, facing the man with the ball. And McCullough's got to do a little bit better job of avoiding the contact. That's a good spot for a little Euro action there. Well, the big three of Doolittle, Maddox, and Reeves have combined for 36 points tonight, friend. That is a good recipe for success. They're going to need that to be the rule and not the exception with three more games remaining in the Big 12 regular season. Oklahoma goes on the road to face West Virginia next up on Saturday. Then they're home against the Longhorns, and they finish up the regular season on the road in Fort Worth, taking on TCU. The enemy with the first. ESPN, two great games for you this week on NBA Wednesday, presented by State Farm at 8 Eastern. John Morant and the Grizzlies facing James, James Harden and the Rockets, followed by the Celtics and Jazz in Salt Lake City. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Stephen A's pregame Sports Center on ESPN. And Billy Donovan's done a great job this year coaching that Oklahoma City Thunder team. They won again tonight in Chicago. Ninth straight road win for the Thunder. And man, John Moran, what a year he's had. 18 points, six assists. Headed towards NBA Rookie of the Year. He's gonna be an exciting star going forward. 
And I don't know if anybody who thought the Thunder would be doing what the Thunder is doing right now. A lot of people thought this team was just being dismantled. And all of a sudden, Chris Paul comes in. Shake Gilgis Alexander is dynamite for him. Yeah, Chris Paul, I talked to some Thunder people. They said he's he's been a great leader. Let's see if this pressure again. You gotta throw caution to the wind right now and take some chances and gamble. The lead is still 13 for the Sooners, six minutes to go. A win keeps them in the NCAA tournament, so says Joe Lenardi. Now that's what McCullough does, good hustle. But Clarence Nicoli, the other freshman, he needed to hit to the floor. He needed to get to the floor as quick as McCullough did. But they're still gonna get that jump on. Keep in mind, Rich, you got three freshmen on the court for Texas Tech right now. Along with West Virginia, the youngest team in the Big 12. These freshmen are getting great opportunities to grow up. Time, however, not on the side of the Red Raiders with under six minutes to go down 13. And Chris Beard only has one timeout left at his disposal. There's another bucket, a 7-0 Texas Tech run. And I like the pressure. They just got to turn it up. And they've got depth to sub as well. Oh, Chris Beard wanted the clean strip from Avery Benson, but Joe DeRosa was right there and called the foul. Joe DeRosa's made this call about 75,000 times in his career. Take a look. Watch uh, watch uh, Benson right there just rip the arm down. That's what we call a one-foot putt in golf <laughs> for Joe DeRosa. A gimme. A gimme. But good effort by Avery Benson. Well, one thing both of these teams can rely on in close contests, free throw shooting is a strength for both of these teams. Oklahoma first in the conference, 77%. And Doolittle rarely misses. He's an 84% free throw shooter, but he missed the front end. This is big right here. Get it to single digits. Edwards wanted it, got it, and got, got stripped by yeah. Reeves. Good hands. You heard all ball right there. Edwards really was hungry to get that ball inside. Maddox working on Ramsey in the low post. He wanted it, but they didn't see it. Seven on the shot clock. Jumper way off the mark, but Johnny on the spot. Brady Maddock puts it in. Can't do anything about that. Great defense. How about the confidence of Kevin McCullough? Growing up before your eyes. Well, McCullough's season high is 15. He's got 11 now, nine of them in the second half. The final timeout called by Texas Tech, still trailing by 10. Sometimes you got to get a little lucky and be in the right place at the right time. Good defense here, challenged by Edwards. Watch Manic sneaks right in. You had talked about the mismatch with Ramsey previously, and then Kevin McCuller, the young man from San Antonio, who was injured as a high school senior, enrolled last January, got to practice all of the spring semester right up into the final four. Rich, they went to the Bahamas this summer. He was hurt again. And Chris Beard told us the other night, this young man is running his own race. It's not, it didn't happen early. It's starting to happen late in his freshman year. And that three that McCullough just hit was just his fifth three-pointer this season. Here's a look at the Big 12 standings as they stand right now. Again, it's become a two-team race at the top of the standings with Kansas and Baylor both 14 and one. Texas Tech looking to get to double digits with a comeback win here. But Oklahoma would win tonight and make them seven and eight, joining West Virginia and Texas. And again, we've talked about it all night long, Fran. Joe Lenardi saying they had to win tonight to stay in the NCAA tournament. And the interesting thing is Joe also said if they win, they don't move off the 12 line. So you could say they've held serve tonight, but that's every bit as important as if they have, if they have, if they lose this game and drop out of uh, contention for a bid right now. Although we have got to keep saying this, there's two weeks of basketball plus the conference tournament left. Little 2-2-1 pressure. Let's see how quickly they come and trap. 
Again, no timeouts remaining for Chris Beard now with four and a half to go. Got good ball handlers on the floor for Oklahoma. Doolittle. Got it again. Unstoppable right there in that high paint area. 14 for Doolittle. Ramsey tries again. Still off the mark. Zero points for the second leading scorer in the Big 12, Jemias Ramsey. Good ball movement by Oklahoma. Have not really been rattled by the pressure in the half court. And the foul's going to go on McCullough. That'll be his fourth. And Brady Manick will go to the line and shoot two free throws. When we return to Oklahoma City, the Sooners looking to pull off the upset. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. And in part by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Well, the Oklahoma Sooners have scored 56 points against Texas Tech, 40 of them coming from their big three, Fran. When they needed it. We talked about it. When they play well, all at the same time, they're 8-3, and three, got a chance to go to 9-3, and three, and there's camaraderie here especially between Christian Doolittle and Brady Maddock who basically known each other their whole lives on the basketball court Christian a year older than Brady played with Brady's brother as well and uh, reuniting on the campus of Norman of course both of them grew up within the shadows of downtown Oklahoma City Brady's family moved to Harrow which is about 20 miles east and Edmond of course is just a suburb of this great place that has a terrific NBA team, great sports town, great town. There's McCullough again. He's been the best player on the floor for the Red Raiders. He's got a bright future, as does all these young players for Chris Beard. A lot of freshmen getting time tonight. There are the two teammates we talked about. The energy level for Texas Tech in the second half has been great. And 
Benson's going to be called for the reach in. Tonight, after NC State and North Carolina over on ESPN, stick around for Sports Center with John Anderson and Zubin Mahenti. Tim Legler joins the show to break down the Bucks and Raptors game. Lewis Riddick at the NFL Combine talking about quarterbacks and important road tests for number four Dayton, who won, number seven Duke, who lost, and number eight Kentucky. Sports Center tonight after basketball on ESPN. <laughs> I was going to tease that and say two of those three teams won tonight. <laughs> That's how you get people to tune spoiler, into Sports huh? Center, yeah. Of course, Wake Forest with that dramatic double overtime. Whoops. That kind of night. Unforced error for Kyler Edwards. And now we're counting down three minutes to go. And you alluded to it, you called it the biggest game of the year for the Sooners. It goes down as the biggest win if they hang on for the victory. No question. So much at stake in late, late February. This is basically an NCAA play-in game. Blocked by Benson. Two on the shot clock. Doolittle got it up and in. Every single break seemingly tonight has gone Oklahoma's way. Air balls that end up in baskets, steals, Late clock baskets, loose balls that go Oklahoma's way. They've made their breaks tonight. And Lon Kruger knew that he had a size advantage. He knew he wanted to attack the basket. They've done that to the tune of 34 points in the paint. And it's been a frustrating night for everybody. But Jamias Ramsey is the poster child of how frustrating it's been for Texas Tech. I think, I think he's going to learn. He picked up those two fouls in, in the first couple minutes. Sometimes great players have got to give up a basket so that they don't foul, so that they can stay in the game. And, and Jamias with those two fouls inadvertently really hurt his team tonight. Shannon hangs and hits. I mean, how many layups did the Red Raiders miss tonight, right? It wasn't for lack of open shots. Those shots were not falling tonight in the home of the OKC Thunder. This is actually a good practice for both teams because the Red Raiders have been pressing the last five minutes or so. And keep in mind, we showed this earlier in the game. If the Big 12 tournament was supposed to, was to start right now, these two teams would be playing in the 3-6 game in that first round. Wilder and Fury fought twice. They're probably going to fight a third time. Yeah. We might be saying the same thing about the Sooners and the Red Raiders. Here's what it looks like as of right now. Of course, we're not quite sure who's going to be the one seed. Will it be Baylor? Will it be Kansas? It literally might come down to pulling a name out of a hat. Well, we're not even sure who's going to be the three and the six That's either. You know, I mean, there's, there's so much craziness left. But uh, you got to think that Texas Tech would love an opportunity to play a third game. And quite frankly, Oklahoma's played this team very well twice. There's a three for Shannon. He's got back-to-back -back buckets. But it's been essentially a double-digit lead most of the night for Oklahoma. And it's been led by that man, Christian Doolittle. 18 now for Doolittle, leading all scorers. Picked off by Doolittle. Well, one minute to go. Saprasov off the mark. And Reeves comes away with it. We talked about Oklahoma's remaining three games in the conference. How about Texas Tech? They have Texas at home Saturday at Baylor and then Kansas to round out the regular season. Now this, Not an easy slate. Yeah, but th this will serve them well. They will be ready Saturday. I don't have any question about it. They'll play Texas at 11 a.m. in front of a great crowd. And of course, next week will be even a bigger week with the 
two top teams in the country. And the South's going to be called. Well, Christian Doolittle masking all, responded tonight with a game high, but some defense was a story early on. Great job by Kirk Webb tonight. Off the bench, his presence was felt even when he didn't block shots. And he, uh, he redshirted last year, but he really wasn't a household name, but he's got to feel good. He and Reeves both sat out last year and bonded. They got really close. And give that young man fresh credit. He was dynamite tonight. Four the blocks, man. That's a career high for a young man, number 52 in white. Holyfield misses the front end. Texas Tech, 51 points. That is a new season low. Their previous low was 52 against arguably the best defense in the Big 12, if not the nation, in the Baylor Bears. But they manage only 51 tonight in Oklahoma City. And Oklahoma responds to the challenge. They needed this win to stay in the NCAA tournament. They got that win, a signature.